Timmy, I'm going to give you your show and tell on your trailer. It does have a hookup light for hooking up at nighttime. It has one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer. Two 20 pound propane cylinders that are full, except for what I use to service the trailer. The glass eye on the regulator is showing that it is red on the inside. As soon as I open the bottle up, that should turn green. Indicating that the bottle it's pointed to has gas coming out of it. As soon as that bottle would happen to come empty, it's going to turn red inside the eye. Indicating that the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the other one as long as the cylinder is open on this one. You do have your light switch for turning your LED lights on your electric jack. And you have your up and down button. But there is also a manual way that you can come in through the top and manually crank that jack up or down. For any reason, it won't go on its own. On your gas bottle cover, it has two little tabs on the bottom of it for a bungee cord to go underneath the metal rack to hold the cover in place. Also has the quick disconnect up at the top so that you don't have to take the cover off every time to turn the cylinders on. We'll start down this side over here. It does have the four BL jacks on all four corners. We're going to go into the front compartment up here. In the front compartment, it has two LED lights that are two-way lights. They can either be motion sensored or on 24-7. In your water fill compartment, up at the top, it does have a 110 outlet that is also GFI protected by the outlet in the bathroom. You have your park cable hookup, your satellite hookup. You have your city water connect. You have a battery disconnect that is in the on position. You have an outside shower with a quick disconnect hose, clicks in here, and we'll click in the port spray on the other side of the trailer. On this side, you have hot and cold running water. There is also a hole in the bottom of the compartment so you can bring your water line and cable lines up through the bottom so you don't have to leave the big compartment door open. Fresh water tank fill is next. The drain line for it is right behind the front jack is the white valve we'll go down this side over here it has a dump station on it with a two inch gray valve in the front and a three inch black valve in the back the sewer hose goes on just like the sewer cap does goes on makes a quarter of a turn locks into place pull your three inch valve first your two inch valve second that will help kind of clean out the hose while you're dumping your black tank, it also has a black tank flush that you can hook to with a hose and regulator and never have to. Once you turn water pressure onto it, it cleans the inside of the black tank only out. Lug nuts on the trailer has been torqued at 100 foot pounds. Tires are air under pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. They also have the nitro gas in them instead of having air. The hot water heater works two ways, 110 and propane. The 110 switch is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. Your gas switch will be on your monitor panel on the inside. You want to make sure that you have water coming out of the top before you turn on electric or gas either way. Also has a drain plug down in the bottom, it's an inch and a sixteenth socket takes it in and out. It is also an anode rod, an anode rod draws all the impurities out of the water to it, eats up that rod instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod short, it's time to replace it. The next connection back is the outside of the furnace. It's going to suck cold air in the top, hotter out the bottom. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact once it's been lit on propane, the mud daubers lock that smell. They go in there and they build their little dirt nest on the inside and it clogs up your airflow. Power cord for the trailer. It's 25 to 30 foot long, plugs into the side of the building over here. Is prepped for a backup camera up top. Does have a spare tire on the back of the trailer. It's aired up to pressure, but it's not been torqued on. It's been put on with a wrench. We have a gas quick couple coupler on this side over here for an outside barbecue grill. We have our two low water drain points that are used for winterizing and dewinterizing of the trailer. 
we have two outside speakers, one in front of the door, one in the back of the door. There's also a place out here to plug a 110 outlet and a place to hook your TV up so you can watch the ball game underneath the canopy. We also have a port spray hose that is the same blue hose that you hook to your city or your outside shower on the opposite side of the trailer, but it only gives you cold water on this side. In the front compartment, you have the two handles. The little handle is for the front tongue jack. The bigger handle is for the balance jacks on all four corners. And it does have another one of them two-way lights in here. We're going to go back to the front door and open it up. Your steps is your next adjustment. Pull the blue handle, looses the steps from the door frame. As we pull the steps out, it has a lever on the bottom of each one of the legs that you can adjust the legs to fit the trailer. There's 18 holes in either one of the legs. The main thing in on it is that it has to sit flat in the threshold for the proper fit of the door over the top of it. Once the steps are out and locked into place, don't change the pitch of the trailer front to back. We'll step up into the trailer now. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side as we step in. Up on your monitor pad, when you hit the battery life, it shows you that it's fully charged. That's really not accurate. Anytime the 110 line's plugged in, it overrides it, shows you the battery's fully charged. Freshwater tank is empty. As it fills up, it'll show one third, two thirds full. Same way with your black tank and your gray tank. Does not have the gray tank too. First red button turns your pump on between the freshwater tank and the faucet. Second red button, when it turns on, has a little red light right above it, door side ignition, that lights the hot water heater for you. The red light will go off in about a minute. It goes through two lighting processes to light the hot water heater on gas. If it does not light, that little red light will come right back on. First black button on this side turns your interior lights in the center of the trailer on. Second one turns your awning lights on. We're going to go ahead and run your awning out. Each one of the arms has a pinch point that you can grab a hold of the arm, pull down against it, tighten up the black knob that puts the pitch of the rain coming off of this corner here. Same way with your back arm. You can pull back on it, put the pitch of the rain going to that corner. Or if it's raining a little more than a mist, you can pull both of them down. It gives the rain more of a straight shot off the awning. We'll loosen the arm back up before you roll it back up. We'll go back to the inside again. We're going to go to the thermostat. We're going to hit it, turn it on. Automatically it gives you your fan speed, auto, high, and low. Run both appliances in the auto position. Hit the mode button one more time. Do you see the snowflake in the lower right hand corner? You'll dial your temperature down for it. Hit that mode button one more time till you see where it says furnace in the lower left hand corner and you'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit that mode button one more time and it says off in the lower right hand corner. All the rest of the lights in the trailer have to be turned on by hand. They have little push buttons in the center of those. You do have a 110 outlet by the uh, kitchen sink. Microwave has a clock button. Hit the clock button, set the time on it. Hit the clock button again until the two center eyes is flashing. Does have a light for the stove top and a fan. For the fan to work properly, the tabs on the outside plastic grill has to be opened up. St stove top is next. We're going to fold it up out of the way two times. Turn the button on the right hand side on. Turn the burner up to where it says high light. Lights with the striker on the left hand side. On your oven button, when you turn it to where it says pilot on, you actually have to hold down on the button 
using the same striker that lights the burners up on top will also light the oven. If you turn the light switch to the down position, you will also have a light in the oven itself. So we're going to go back to the LP carbon monoxide detector. Green light indicates it has power going to it. When it smells LP, it gives you one continuing beep that will not quit. If it's carbon monoxide, it will beep four times, two times in a row. Brown vent on the cabinet is for the heat. Breaker box is marked with your 30 amp main being on the left going to the right hand side and your car fuses up and down. Starting out with the top, the bottom four are empty and they are marked on the lid on the inside of the uh, breaker box. Stereo is AM FM, has inside and outside speakers. Zone one is your inside speakers, zone two is your outside speakers. It will also play a DVD between the stereo and the TV. Has a wall mounted TV over here on the right hand side. The remote for the stereo and TV are in the top drawer. The tabletop comes off the two pedestals, goes down between the two bench seats. The two back cushions come out over the top of the table to make a smaller bed there. You also have a fire escape window in the back. Pull up on the two red handles, push on the center of the window. The window will go up since it's a bedroom area. That way you have a way to escape. Couch butterflies out into a bed. The light above the couch has to be turned on by hand. Does have a 110 outlet above the bed and a USB port. We're going to go back to the refrigerator next. Refrigerator has two settings. There's one in the freezer section at the top says cold or colder. If you turn it to where it says colder, all the cold air stays in the top. Does none of the cold air go to the bottom until you turn it middle ways or back to where it says cold. In the bottom of the refrigerator, it has push buttons to set the temperature on it. Where it says set is the on and off button and the diagnostic button. We're going to close that door back up, and it does have a travel lock between the two doors. It comes over, locks the two doors in place. <coughs> it does have a knurled knob in the vent in the ceiling, but no fan. Now we're going to come back down to the panel here to the side with the two screws out. You take those two screws out, we'll access you into the back of the hot water heater and the water pump. <coughs> Two white valves on the back of the hot water heater are pointed directly towards it. When you get ready to winterize, they turn sideways. That makes a loop at the back of the hot water heater. The water pump has the same white valve as the hot water heater does, but it has a line that doesn't have anything on the end of it that goes down into your antifreeze jug. Turn the white valve in line with that hose to winterize. We're going to step up and go into the bathroom area next. In the bathroom, you do have a 110 outlet by the bathroom sink. It is your GFI outlet for all eight outlets that's in the trailer. On the toilet, it has a single foot flush on the right-hand side of the toilet. Instructions for how to use the toilet are on the back of the lid. Narrow knob in the vent in the ceiling, but this one does have a fan in it. The little black button on the left-hand side turns the fan on. In the bathroom area, we also have a light switch on the wall that turns the light above the sink on. We do have a light above the toilet that is one of the two-way lights. It can be on 24-7 or motion sensored, either way. Showers, just like what you have at home. We've got hot water on the left side, cold water on the right side. But now we do have an air conditioner vent in the bathroom in the ceiling, and we have a heat vent in the floor below the tub. One more light switch that turns the bedroom lights on above the end of the bed. The two lights above the headboard have to be turned on by hand. It has a USB port on either side of the master bedroom and a 110 outlet on either side of the master bedroom. We also have a fire escape window on the off door side. Red handle comes loose, goes down, slides between the frame of the window and we'll go all the way through the frame so that you can escape from in the bedroom area. There is another place for a TV on the wall here. 
with a 110 outlet to plug it into. Works off the park cable or antenna on top of the trailer. Another vent in the ceiling. No fan in it. Does have a neural knob to crank the vent up. And there is storage underneath the front bed. In the bedroom, you do have a round vent in the ceiling for the air conditioning. And you have a brown vent on the wall for heat. There's a closet space on either side and cabinet space on the top for extra pillows and blankets. That is basically everything on your trailer. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.